Cockatoo Island is an imposing rocky landmass in the heart of Sydney Harbour. World Heritage listed and now managed by the Sydney Harbour Federation Trust, it has a long and brutal history. As a convict penitentiary in the early 1800s, it was the Alcatraz of Australia. Later, it housed a boys' and girls' reformatory, both infamous for deplorable conditions. Gaining a more respectable reputation as a shipbuilding yard and then a naval dockyard, Cockatoo was nevertheless a highly dangerous place of work. Standing above it all, a grand house of convict cut stone, the residence of the island's superintendent, Biloela House, reputedly its most haunted site. Over the centuries, tales of Cockatoo's hauntings have leached from its historic walls. But until now, it has never come under paranormal investigation. That is about to change. As the team from Haunting Australia arrives, Cockatoo Island is a premier location for this team based on the history and all that has gone on here. Kind of a lawless place where violence ruled. That's the kind of place you're likely to find some pretty aggressive spirits. It looks absolutely amazing. As far as ghosts, I think um, the island is going to be very active. I think there's going to be a lot of things going on. This supernatural stakeout is a massive undertaking with over a kilometer of CCTV camera cabling. Communications will be affected by the tall sandstone cliff partitioning the island. Plus, our team will need to deal with the squawking of one of Australia's densest seagull populations. But with Surveillance Central set up in the vast turbine shop, our investigators are ready. Let the ghostly games begin. With a micro camera rig strapped to his torso, psychic Ian Lawman enters the dark tunnels beneath the island. I'm kind of getting um, a lot of um, noise in here, a lot of sound, and it's basically coming from, I feel, people um, working down here and the fact that they're running back and forth. I'm getting... Um, an impression of, of, of being followed. I'm not gonna look, I'm gonna see if that energy comes forward for me. As I'm walking further down, I'm aware of... Um, what was that then? On the hill above, medium railing cable explores the convict quarter. Directly in front of me is just like an area of dread. I just feel like it was quite brutal. This place in general was really, really brutal. Amongst these sandstone buildings, the girls' reformatory, in its day a much feared institution. I just feel sad in this room. I just feel really sad. I just feel there's so much emotion. I feel a little bit lost. I'm disorientated. Um, I can hear, hear lots of voices. Um, I'm getting a lot of younger, younger people. I can see all the, I can see all the beds. It's almost like I'm seeing all these beds, all these beds in this area. Um, I don't feel the conditions here were the best, to be honest. I feel like for anyone that has experienced being here, 
it would have been actually quite hard. In fact, the reformatory was eventually shut down for mismanagement and cruelty. To, I, feel like, I feel like someone wanders this room, and I'm not saying that lightly. I actually feel like there is a spirit that enters this room quite frequently. Um, I am getting, yes, I'm getting confirmation of this. Um, I feel very firm. I feel like I'm a very firm woman, so I don't feel like this woman was an easy woman to communicate with. Described in historical text as controlling and full of rage was Mary Ann Lucas, unhappy wife of the reformatory superintendent. Could she be the reported Red Lady of Cockatoo? Directly beneath, Ian seems embroiled in a drama from the past. Hello? Just aware of um, a gentleman stood right at the end of that tunnel where I am now. I can see him as clear as anything. Who is that? He's got what I would call a thick military style overalls. An apparition reported in the tunnels is that of a naval captain. But who is the seafaring spectre? The name of John. I feel as if I need to hide from somebody. Which is something weird that I need to hide along this area here. Just here. I'm kind of hiding around here and peeking around this corner. But as I'm kind of tuning into this guy or picking this guy up, um, I thought he was military, but I don't think he is military. I think he's dressing as military to try and escape a situation so he could have been a prisoner and now trying to escape. Ian believes he's closing in on the counterfeit captain. I still feel that following sensation and I do feel it's very, very close with me at this moment in time. Shit. Or is the captain closing in on Ian? Coming up... Oh, that is the worst ever freaking feeling. The fright of the seagull. And after the break, Ian discovers the source of a haunting. But I don't think he is military. In the heart of Sydney Harbour, Cockatoo Island, a living museum and a monument to the past, housing over 150 years of history, currently under investigation by the Haunting Australia team. Stranded on the island with its spirits until sunrise. Deep in its tunnels, Ian has been the first to pick up company. Shit. What was that? Channeling a man in military uniform, who our psychic now suspects may be a paranormal imposter. I thought he was military, but I don't think he is military. I think he's dressing as military to try and escape a situation. But did he escape? So I think what actually happened to him, I don't think he made it. <laughs> Above the tunnels, Raylene faces a gauntlet of gulls. Shit! This is the cliffside seagull rookery. Oh! <laughs> Fierce when their unborn appear threatened, the birds form a barrier too formidable for our investigator to breach. I've got a torch. As soon as I shine this torch down there, they're going to go ballistic. Perched above all the shrieking is Biloela House, the former superintendent's residence and the jewel in Cockatoo's crown. This is where many reports of the Red Lady apparition have emanated, including the concerned contractor who tells of his very own paranormal experience. 
The contractor had followed me into the building and uh, walked into one of the smaller rooms. I felt an instantaneous, a very cold chill go straight through my body. To the point that I turned around to him and said, Do you feel that, mate? As I've turned around, he came flying out the, uh, the doorway, uh, spread eagled almost. Whatever it was, it didn't want me in that room. I caught, kind of caught him before he hit the wall, uh, and he broke away from me and uh, proceeded to run straight out the hallway. He then said to me that uh, he just got the biggest shove in the back that he's ever had in his entire life. He said to me, uh, you know, something didn't want me in there. Uh, and that was no surprise. Could the contractor have been shoved by Mary Ann, angry wife of reformatory superintendent George Lucas? Searching for evidence, Rob and Alan set up inside this supposed psychic hotspot. To the residents of this home, we understand that when certain individuals arrive here, You've shown your displeasure with them through the use of hard shoves to the back. We're pretty good sized guys. I think we can take a shove to the back. We'll there therefore know your displeasure with us being here. If there is anybody here that can hear my voice right now, these devices can record your voice. Alan is using a digital recorder to capture EVP or electronic voice phenomena. So if you feel you want to come forward and say something to either of us, please don't hesitate and don't be scared. We're not here to hurt you at all. We just want to get your voices recorded so that you can be remembered and you can get your message out to people. I have another device that may be of interest to you. I'm going to place this device in the hallway and step away from it. Rob is employing a tri-field meter which measures EMF or electromagnetic flux. Electromagnetic flux is what happens when the electromagnetic field around us changes. A change in the electromagnetic field often precedes other paranormal events, so that is why we have made the connection between paranormal activity and a change in the EMF field. All it does is measure your energy and give me a response that I can hear. So I'm going to turn this on. You give me three short bursts, and I will say good night. It is your home. Just one, two, three. One. Two. Okay. Alan? Rob? I have been asked to leave. You've been asked to leave? I have been asked to leave. By whom? By this guy right here. The tri-field meter. Really? I did. Rob can take a hint. You've used tri-fields before, right? Yep. But will the lady of the house warm to Alan? So Rob's now left the house. Now, just wondering if you could do the same for me. If you could give me three short bursts on this device, I'll also leave your house. Thank you. All right, I think it's time to leave. I think your message has been gotten across. Three distinct. So I'm pretty convinced that that was, was a direct response to my question, which was, should I leave, just like yours? It definitely seemed to be intelligent response. Ian arrives at Biloela House. Okay, um, uh, Intrigued by Rob and Alan's findings, beautiful. he's intent on making contact. I got a shiver straight away there. Um, as soon as I walked into this room here, so I know there's something with me, or somebody with me at the moment. Ooh, I'm gonna cry. As I walk into this room, I'm aware of a female presence here. Um, a lady who would <clears throat> appear to be looking out of this window 
and um, just looking onto the, the water. But for some reason, I feel really emotional with her. I feel really, really sad. She's um, <clears throat> waiting for something or waiting for somebody. tell you why I feel like I need to cry but there's some really heavy emotions going on in here I just feel this lady for some reason and I think she's mourning a loss of something she's got a connection to the island or connection to this house but there's some sadness around her and I really really feel that that um, this is really embarrassing a big bloke like me crying isn't it whoa No, I'm going to have to go out of this. I'm just going to walk out of this house because I think there's just some energy in here that's not right for me as a man to feel. Raylene has finally psyched herself up. There's just so many. She's ready to take flight. That is the worst ever freaking feeling. Ah, I'm out of here. Having braved the birds, Raylene finally arrives at the officer's quarters. Is anyone here? Would anyone, oh, I just felt a very strange energy then. I just almost felt like, yeah. My energy's shifting as I'm talking, so I'm almost feeling like something's a, okay, I know you're here. I know someone's here, because I can feel. I can feel your presence. Perhaps that presence is an apparition reported in this building. A convict era sentry who, in death, continues to guard the stairwell. I used to live in this house between 1952 and um, 1956. My grandfather was a chief ambulance officer. There is um, a ghost here called George. The first you heard of someone coming to visit would be a call up the stairs. So you'd come to the top of the stairs and look down to welcome them. But if there was no one there, and you could still hear the noise of someone walking up the stairs, then that was George. I'm gonna just continue to walk. I certainly don't feel like I'm alone at the moment. I just heard a male voice saying, don't come in here. Oh, just had someone touch me. Wow. There was a friend of the family a woman by the name of Mrs. Mack. And she visited one day, looked down and saw George and described the uniform that he had on, which was a red coat with crossed white strips. This was the uniform of the regiment that was here um, with the, um, the convicts at the time. God, no one's been here for a long time. I have got a male spirit with me. I'm just wondering why he hasn't said a great deal. Can you give me a sound? Can you give me some verification that you're here? And why, why are you here? The story is that George was killed by a convict or convicts. George was on guard duty down the bottom here. Um, and the officers lived upstairs. And he fell asleep and was killed. It's got a, it's got a very Intense top feeling. Whoa. Coming up, Ray oh, is oh. under avian attack. But, oh my god, they're dive bombing me. And after the break, a close encounter in the officers' quarters. Wait, don't come out of this energy. I'm not going to be feeling too well later. By day, Cockatoo Island is a popular heritage listed tourist destination. But when the sun goes down, 
it takes on a completely different atmosphere. And the Haunting Australia team is enduring a chilly night amidst its many and varied historic structures. Whoa. In the officers' quarters, Raylene has found herself buffeted by supposed spirit activity. Just had someone touch my arm, like really touch my arm, like grab my arm, okay? If you're gonna touch me, you need to know, let, let me know who you are. To complete her investigation of this building, she must climb the stairwell, where the spirit of a convict sentry supposedly lurks. Um, it's like this, oh gosh. The energy around me right now is just so yuck. Um, I have a sense of my energy being drained. I have to, I actually have to finish this investigation because I'm almost feeling like if I don't come out of this energy, I'm not gonna be feeling too well later. So I'm just coming back down the stairs. <sighs> totally spooked. Raylene gives up the ghost. The further I got into the house and, and looked around and, and connected, the harder it was to be in the environment, but I felt really extremely uncomfortable. <sighs> Ray too feels uncomfortable as he faces the obstacle that proved so threatening to Raylene, the rookery. Oh my God, look at these birds. They get shot upon her. Oh, oh, oh. There are so many, but oh my God, they're dive bombing me. <laughs> Facing his fears, Ray makes the brave dash to the safety of the silo walkway. There are hundreds of birds here, and it's like Alfred Hitchcock meets Ray Jordan. Oh my God, they're literally dive bombing. And no doubt they're gonna sit on it. All right, okay. This is insane. And they're very, oh my God, they're very aggressive. Jesus. Okay, so mum. Directly above, Raylene enters Billowila House, where Ian channeled a disturbing female presence. The female that resides in this house, I've got a voice recorder in my hand and I'd really love for you to strike up a little bit of a friendship with me. I know you may not want to leave the house. As soon as I walked towards this door, I immediately heard something to my left. I just thought I saw something then. Oh, Jesus. What does it? I just stepped down there. I took a step in. It's not doing it now. Why is it not doing it now? I just need you to make a connection, sweetheart. Give me your voice. Give me a yes. Give me a year. Did you just say yes? Raylene has Did heard you? what she believes to be a disembodied voice. Give me a yes. Upon replay, the voice sounds female. Give me a yes. I heard you say yes. Ray investigates the silo walkway, a towering gantry beside the turbine shop. And um, it's quite an eerie feeling to be walking around on my own and it's easy to imagine you could get lost along here. 
In the early days of the colony, storage silos were hand-carved directly out of the sandstone by convict labor. So as you can see, it's a perfectly carved area where the silos used to be this. In one of these silos, three convict workers died, asphyxiated by the stench of rotting wheat. Are these deaths linked with the shadow spirits reported to lurk in the turbine shop next door? If there's any spirits present with me, come forward and give me a sign. Is there anyone here with me? Whoa, what was that? I heard it too. It sounds as though it came from the end of the room, though. Yeah. The warehouse here. Just upon saying that, there was like a rock came down now. I'm not sure whether a bird has dropped the rock, which is possible. Was that you? A falling rock or knock in response? If that was you dropping a rock or doing anything, to get my attention, please do it again. I'm not touched. Whoa. Whoa. And again. It's definitely coming from over there, in that definitely. direction. And look again, Ray stopped. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. As the gantry grows quiet. Ray relocates to the cavernous turbine shop, teaming up with Raylene to investigate the reported shadow people. Is there anyone here with us? Is there anyone that'd like to make communication with us? Cockatoo's industrial precinct is sometimes used as an art space, and one local artist had a disturbing encounter near this disused elevator shaft. But one day when I was uh, installing the work, I saw a shadow. So I thought it was a figure running into the space along the wall and it sort of went behind some machinery and I went to find who it was and there was no one there. The shadow person is here. I request your presence to come forward to make a connection with me. I have a device in my hand, I can record your voice. So if there's anyone here with me in the lift area, contact myself or Raylene. We're here to talk to you. If there's anyone here that wishes to make some sort of connection, now's the time to do it. The duo heads deeper into the darkness of the workshop. So if there's any spirits here with Raylene and myself, show yourself on camera. Where did that come from? It was close. Was that a spirit that made the noise? Can you do it again? The mysterious sounds cease, and their investigation comes to a close. But on Cockatoo Island, it seems all spirit roads lead to Billowila House. Ian returns with Gora for technical backup. If you're here, can you move around in this room for us? We can help you. Gaurav and I could help you maybe understand why you're here. Could you make the lights go off for us? We'd really appreciate it. If you could try and give us some evidence that you're with us. Garav would like your permission. Oh. She's here. After the break, have Ian and Gorav made contact with the alleged ghost of Biloela? 
The Haunting Australia team is conducting an overnight investigation of Cockatoo Island. This imposing structure in the middle of Sydney Harbour seems to have presented a side of its personality rarely seen by daytime visitors. But our investigators appear to have uncovered the dark underbelly of this historic Sydney site. In the tunnels beneath the towering cliffs, Ian Lawman believes he has made contact with a gentleman in navy whites. I thought he was military, but I don't think he is military. In Biloela House, a disembodied voice responded to Raylene. Give me a yes. But Rob and Alan's ghost gear told them to leave. And I will say good night. It is your home. And Ian was made to feel distinctly unwelcome. I can't even tell you why I feel like I need to cry, but there's some really heavy emotions going on in here. Ian has now returned to Biloela with Gorau to corroborate his psychic intuition with scientific evidence. Can you go towards one of the lights? Light the lights for us. We are not here to disturb you. And we can probably help you with something if you want. Gorav is employing a series of REM pods which emit electromagnetic fields. If a field is broken, the device beeps and its LED lights flash. Paranormal investigators believe this means a ghost is near. OK, can you try and make... Well done. Come forward now, please. I know you're here. I can sense you're here. Thank you. Can you move to the door? We need you to move towards this one. Come to the door. Very nice. Brilliant. I need it to go faster than that. Come on. Why do you like it over here? Thank you. Can you do that again for me? On command, I'm going to count to three and I want you to make the lights go. One, two, three. Permanently. OK, that's impressive. Can you show yourself to us? Was it you carrying the baby? Did you lose a child? Thank you. If you lost a child, make the lights go off on the machine on the right. We can help you. Wow. Listen to Garav, this is my friend. If you lost a girl child, give us two beeps on the equipment kept on the window. Wow. If you want to answer in yes, you can answer on the equipment just in front of me. If it is a no, you can do it on the right. Do you want help? No? You want to be alone here? Yes. Yes or no? Would you, can you just stop for me a moment? So Garav and I can help. Can you stop that for me? It's getting irritating. <laughs> Brilliant. A lot of times, high electromagnetic field can set it off. Yeah. As you can see, the EMF here is very slight, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Do you want us to leave from this place? One for yes, two for no. I think Garav.
um, I don't feel her energy. Yeah. I feel we had her and she's gone. I'll put this to the team, to the tech guys, yeah. and we'll see what they have to explain for it, yeah. what explanation they come up with. That was a great investigation. Well done. As the team concludes its investigation, Biloela House, the site of so much activity, gazes down indifferently from its lofty perch. Our investigators have much evidence to analyze. But first, they're keen to view the island from a different perspective. And what better way than taking in the spectacular sights of Sydney Harbour on a tall ship? This is just one of these iconic places I've always wanted to visit. Of course, with this bunch, it's inevitable that a leisurely cruise would turn to talk of hauntings on this world-famous harbour. Gaurav, this is the Sydney Opera House. It's haunted. It is supposed to be haunted, actually. Apparently, so is the Harbour Bridge. There's supposed to be people's bodies buried in the walls. With the wind picking up, it's time to hoist sail. Six, two, six, two, six, two, six. Ray and Raylene volunteer to climb to the crow's nest. <laughs> with encouragement from their teammates. It's a really long way down. <laughs> That's it. Ray, right, just stay positive. Forget about what this guy says about your jinx. With much courage and physical effort, they make it to the top. Yeah! Oh my god. Well done, mate. There you go, darling. Just a little champers to celebrate our victory. Hey. Not to be outdone, psychic bad boy Ian Lawman gives it a go and is rewarded by an unsurpassed view as the vessel passes beneath the bridge. Finally, the tall ship passes the island that proved so challenging to our investigators. Cockatoo. Here you can see why it would be compared to Alcatraz. Yeah, you can. Even in daylight, Cockatoo, the largest island in Sydney Harbour, has a distinctly formidable presence. The team disembarks and assembles on shore, where they commence their analysis. Raylene starts with the alleged disembodied voice she captured in Biloela House. Clearly, the island's haunted hotspot. Give me a yes. yes. Wow. That's a definite answer. You heard this, not, not sensed, didn't come from the tape recorder. You heard it when you were alone. I, I heard it when I was in the house by myself. Very quiet environment. It's a definite female voice. I mean, it definitely ties in with what other people have done in Biloela House. So that, it's incredible, really, really amazing. Rob believes his investigation with Alan resulted in a different form of paranormal communication. If someone does not want me to interact with them, be it a person or a spirit, I back away. And that's what you're going to see in this case. You give me three short bursts, and I will say goodnight. It is your home. One. Two. So, this was someone who clearly did not want us present. I handed the tri-field meter to Alan, who had an almost identical experience. The reason that I went for three in a row is that this thing could go off if there's a stray radio frequency. It might go off once. Heck, in a, in a long shot, it might go off twice. But three short ones in a row, I was impressed, and it was time to go. The response by Gorav's REM pods was even more impressive. On command, I'm going to count to three and I want you to make the lights go. One, two, three, permanently. Okay, that's impressive. 
So this communication went on for half an hour at least. I was surprised. I've used REM pods in the past and this is a really good example of communication. Spirits diminish in their ability to communicate. They lose energy. They're using energy to have this kind of communication. So to go for a half an hour and do what you asked every time is very strong evidence. I think it's really compelling. Two different teams who've picked up on the same spirit. Was it the supposed spirit of Mary Ann Lucas, wife of the tyrannical reformatory supervisor, George? I think something very specific and distressful may have happened to create such a strong haunting. The answer may lie in Ian's experience. With this child, so I felt this emotion. Bang, these tears, and this emotion just came over me straight away. History paints Mary Ann as a sad and angry figure reputedly engaging in violent disputes with her husband. I made contact with a lady. She was stood looking out the window, him crying, and I was aware that she'd lost a baby. Was this the source of Mary Ann's unhappiness? If you lost a child, make the lights go off on the machine on the right. We can help you. Wow. The team may have solved the riddle of the Red Lady. A lot of people have seen a lady in red dress looking out of her window. It could be that lady. Considering how ambitious the cockatoo investigation has been, Rob seems thrilled with the results. So, solid investigation. I was very happy with this. And I was very happy, honestly, with all of you to take on a place like that. Cockatoo Island is definitely a haunted location. You cannot have that many people collect that much evidence and not think it's haunted.